Hello, everybody. Welcome to Moreville Orville, the podcast that reviews the Orville. This is Mike Gall, and I'm joined by G.I. Jolie. Yes, you are. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. And Champ Ian. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? Great. It's a beautiful day outside. Perfect day to be sitting inside to do a podcast. Yes, that's right. That's what we're here right? for. That's um, right. We should have done this yesterday when the earth was literally trying to burn us, or the sun was trying to burn us off the face of the earth. Right. Somebody sent me a meme yesterday, I think. It's that uh, uh, comparing the weather to that um, enemy in Super Mario 3 that tries to kill you, oh. the sun that just follows you around until you're dead. Yeah, oh, that was, I remember that. That yeah. was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was rough. Today's a little bit better, though. Mm-hmm. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to talk about a TV show instead of enjoying the sun. So hopefully you'll join us for the next 30 or so minutes. Um, we're going to talk about Morville. I mean, sorry, not Morville. We're, we're going to talk, talk about, about a podcast called Morville yeah. Orville. <laughs> it's called Morville Morville Orville. <laughs> And I'm your host, Champion, and I'm here with G.I. Joe Lee and Mike L. Very meta. Okay, so but actually, we're here to talk about the Orville Season 3, Episode 3. And this mm-hmm. one is called, oh crap, does anyone remember because I don't have it up Mortality right now. Mortality Paradox. There you go. Mortality and, Paradox. Sounds like a fun one, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and Champion is going to give us the brief rundown of what happens in this episode. Very brief rundown. But uh, before I do, have either of you thought that maybe, I don't know, like it's we're probably a few minutes in, probably about two minutes in now, so our theme music should probably be just about wrapping up. Doesn't it sound a little bit out of place, last couple episodes? That happy little piano ditty. And oh, then we you talk think we should get this, a minor chord distressing version? distressing... Yeah, maybe, maybe we can like have something written. Hey, can somebody transcribe this into a into a minor key? I don't know. We might have to. Yeah. On the back of my head. <clears throat> All I can say. Okay, I'll, I'll, I have comments, but I'll save them for after your plot summary. <laughs> uh, plot summary. This is a, a pretty uh, interesting little episode where um, uh, Kiali comes back from a vacation and uh, she returns to the Orville. They find a planet that is normally just a chunk of rock in space, but um, they're lured in by uh, by electromagnetic magnetic signals from uh, Isaac says eight and a half billion people. So they go check it out, and uh, things aren't what they seem. The crew, uh, the landing party, gets um, bounced from one scenario to another, where they find themselves fighting for their lives. Yep. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, it? Yeah, that's basically yeah. it. Okay. Um. So here's the thing, okay? Oh. I held... Huh? Well, I was going to say, I've been arguing with people on Facebook for weeks now, as I always do, about the new season. I've been defending the new season. But I can officially say now we're three episodes in, and I am officially worried. <laughs> um. Because... Whew. All I can say about this episode is that not only was there little to no humor, which we've all complained about, but this episode also had Bordas, right? Throughout he was in every scene. Mm-hmm. Um he was he was his character was there, whatever. There were there were scenes that were specifically about him. But he didn't say a single thing that only Bordas could say. And the more I thought about it, that went for a lot of characters, and it almost seemed like these were just ciphers in a plot, delivering lines that push the plot forward. And it didn't like I, I don't think this right. I'm going to look it up. But I don't think this writer is a regular writer. And it just felt like, oh, they had an idea for a plot and they just put these characters in. But nothing about the plot was specific to these characters. And mm. I think that's a bigger issue than just the fact that there's no humor. Um, what does anyone else think? Yeah. I think that there is more humor in this one than there has been in the previous two episodes. Previous However, ones? I agree that it was almost humorless. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, the previous there have been two previous episodes, right? Yes, this is episode three, yeah. Yeah. So there is more humor in this one than the previous episodes, while still being almost humorless. Which says a lot. I mean, 
it, it uh, doesn't take much to out humor the last two episodes combined. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to say so, quickly. So this one was written by a woman named. Oh, sorry. <laughs> delay. Sorry, there's a delay on the internet. I'll just say quickly. The episode was written by Cherry Cheva Prava Dumrong, which I'm gonna guess is a Thai name. But anyway, um. Yep. It is. Okay. She actually has worked on the show before. She co-wrote the episode Firestorm, so she is experienced. But again, it doesn't change the fact that, again, take every... And I'm just using Bordas as the, as the, the example because he's kind of the wild card of the, the cast. Take every line he said and switch it with another character. Anyone could have said his lines. Mm-hmm. Nothing... Maybe one or two lines were Bordas-esque, but I just felt like he was just... You know, it's like something happens and he comments it. He sees something, he comments on it, but nothing was Bordas esque. Um, and then this whole plot of the show where they're seeing their biggest fears. Ooh, I thought it could have gone in such a different direction. Like, okay, when they show up and they see the high school, the first thing you think, you again, they, Star Trek used to do this all the time, and I have no problem with it. But right away, you know, well, they're not on Earth. We know they're on an alien planet, so this is clearly an illusion. But they could have gone so much further with the premise even with the high school thing the moment that that rancor monster showed up i was I, I, it it pissed me off to the point that i i might think this is the worst episode of the sh- series so far because at least if you're going to do uh, a fear of high school as your premise then make it a true fear of high school and make make the bad guy be a bully that no one's power that everyone's powerless against that would be frightening or being shamed at high school or being embarrassed but to just have it be this rancor monster was idiotic and then from there the other fears were equally as disappointing i thought you know um including uh bordises with the um the kind of what was not a morgue but what's that no, called the, it was a morgue that's that's what yeah, they, it was that's a they, they it. morgue yeah. okay okay the morgue i just thought that it could have been more frightening so okay, fine. Everything uh, could have been more frightening. Right. One of the one of the problems that I had was that I had trouble determining whose fears these things were supposed to be. Right. And like, did they were they all supposed to get one? Because the first one seemed to be about Gordon getting beat up, and then the second right. one seemed to be about Gordon flying an airplane. These were Gordon fears, I guess. But then, then they we end up on Salea, but it's Kelly that gets sucked underwater. And is is Bordas really mm-hmm. afraid of morgues? That's his big fear uh, of, of dead right. people coming back to life and, and killing him. I don't know. I thought for a second that maybe because, um, oh, what episode was it earlier? I think it was in the first season where uh, where uh, Ed Mercer, he made an offhand comment about there being an anti-bullying law named after him. So right. maybe the high school episode was about him, but it was Gordon who was getting picked on. So I don't know. There didn't seem to be a lot of cohesion to any of this. Yes. No. The only, however, and I'll spoil it, the only cohesion to anything that has ever existed before was the reason why it was all happening. Um, mm-hmm. And that was the character that we, the characters or the race of people that we see I can't remember which episode it was, but it's the one where Kelly becomes a god. Yeah. Yeah, which was referenced, yeah. I don't remember which one it was. Yeah. Can... It was interesting to have that callback, but right. uh, we, we didn't need that. Yeah. I don't know. It was like they almost were trying to find any reason to bring this uh, race of people back, and this is the best that they came up with. But now they're immortal, and they want to experience death. Like, oh, okay. But... Yeah. So that was called Mad <laughs> Idolatry, that mm. episode. That's it. Which I, I like the idea and why they brought that character back. I just, le- everything leading up to the, um, to us seeing or the revelation that it is that race of people who are up to no good. Mm-hmm. And then that they're using the crew of the Orville to play this game. That was lacking. Because everything that became before the revelation was not really well written or formed. Right. It totally fell apart. The idea that this race of people is essentially mm-hmm. they've be, they're, they've advanced so far that they are the galaxy. They are potentially matter or whatever it is that they're speculating that this race has become, um, has advanced to, I should say. 
that is super interesting and I'm glad that they did it, but it just, it didn't work. It, it all, it, it was like a lot of really cool ideas that just like didn't work all together. Yeah, poorly executed. I think that um, they were close in a lot of ways on this one, but totally fell flat. I liked the idea that Kiali wasn't really Kiali, but they, I, I think they should have explored that the entire time, given us some breadcrumbs to follow. Yeah. So that we maybe thought, huh. Maybe not even like necessarily her, but have it sort of come out that maybe one of the landing party is not one of the landing party and one of them is controlling it and have a little bit of a mystery as to whom is behind this. That's a great idea. If she would have done little clues and then maybe at some point they could have gone, wait a minute, how come we've all experienced our fears, but you haven't or something like that, or you've been acting strange or something. And so that at least if you're a viewer, it kind of leads you to suspect her first or something. I don't know what, I don't know what, I don't know. It was just, the funny thing is, is I was actually subconsciously wondering if they're ever going to bring back the whole Kelly is a God subplot. And coincidentally they did. So I thought it was a cool idea, but again, like you said, this just wasn't the way to do it. Um, And not to mention when they revealed that, uh, Kelly standing right there and her presence had nothing to do with why yeah. they picked them other than like, oh, well, it, it could have been a worse choice, I think is what they said. Yeah. Like, so really, and you know, I'll, I must say there is one thing I did like about this episode. When they find that little um, machine that they think is creating the illusion, then they destroy it and then it kind of reveals that they're actually on this planet then you're like oh okay well i guess that was the twist then you find out no they're actually still part of the illusion at least that was surprising i didn't see it coming yeah but yeah that was cool but then it's almost like they didn't even quite do that right i don't know so that was one good twist but again everything leading up to it was just Again, this this episode was the first one I ever stopped halfway through and was like, I'll just finish it later. It just <laughs> didn't it didn't pull me in at all. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um It was the first well, I, I was watching it with friends, so I, I couldn't exactly stop and leave the room, but a couple of the friends fell asleep. So <laughs> a couple, one Julie fell asleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> really? Now, since we're nitpicking, I'm just going to talk about the character in the show who's called the Traveler. Actually, no. She is called, what is her name? The alien at the end? Uh, Denal? Da- Denal. So, very cool design, very futuristic, like a computer. Now, obviously, like this actress is fine. She looks great. But this smirk is very in my opinion, un, like, it doesn't seem appropriate for this sort of um, post-human being that should be beyond trying to look cute, might delete later. You know what I mean? That's what I thought <laughs> looking at this girl. Like, listen, again, you're not on the OC. Like, you're, you're on the Orville and you're playing a futuristic alien. So I thought she was not miscast, but maybe misdirected. Did anyone else think that? I was a little too distracted by the, by the outfit. To be completely honest, I thought that the uh, the sort of Tron suit that she was wearing was a little distracting. But. Oh, I lo- okay, so you didn't like it. I love the suit, but Julie, what'd you think? Well, I liked it too, but because it was it evoked memories of Tron. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, colored like colored lights. It, the the pastel hues were perfect. Um, I didn't really care. Like I, I figured that if they are a race of beings who is essentially matter. They are just appearing to us in the form of like in, in a humanoid form. So it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. This might not even be her face. So I didn't really, I wasn't too focused on it. And I only made the Tron comparisons because someone makes a Tron joke. Mm. Well, they did so, in the show. I didn't notice that. Yeah. They're like, well, she's busy throwing discs. Oh, okay. In a futuristic <laughs> video game. Yeah. Someone, I feel like Malloy made the joke. Mm. So, because it feels like a very Gordon thing to say. Did, um, yeah. Hmm? I was going to say, did you notice she was wearing high heels? Yes. Ridiculous. And on like a sandy, desolate planet <laughs> makes no sense. Right. Oh, God. Um, however, oh, that reminds me. Um, Malloy felt like Malloy. 
in yeah, this episode. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. He felt a little more like Malloy. I'm, I'm, I, I still think he's out of place in this uh, Orville Discovery season that we've got here. Yeah. Like he's, he, he's, he's being tasked to be too serious, and yeah, I don't know. I, I think the show is kind of the, they, they can't do what they seem to want to do as well as they could be able to do it with these characters. This mm-hmm. is a, this yeah. is, this is a show for a different cast. Yeah, they got to lighten it up way more. And the thing is, is a it, g- yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's I, like they were like, ooh, Discovery stole our, all our ideas, so we'll steal Discovery's idea of making a drama that's serious, but actually make it good. If this were Discovery by Discovery's current standards, I'd be like, okay, this is a good episode of Discovery. You know, you're completely right about that. You're completely right about that. Yeah. Because... I don't know. Is this one? Of, I I like that they're still doing like individual episodes. Like I'm I'm glad that the Orville hasn't switched to a a, a season long story arc. But th- this this would be, you know, a, a great episode with a few changes with, you know, hung on the Discovery franchise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, by that standard, I think the first two episodes were actually really good plots. This one was a good premise, but they didn't execute it well. So I don't even think it was a good serious sci-fi. Like I said, did any, did anyone else feel like it jumped the shark the moment that the Rancor showed up, or was it just me? No, it's not just you. It sort of became unbelievable at that point right. because it it came out of nowhere and it didn't it didn't make any sense in any context. The other problem is, and I think we talked about this TNG episode before. You, you remember the episode where um, Dr. Crusher is on the ship, and I think people keep disappearing? Yes, Remember mm-hmm. Me is yeah, the episode. Yeah, great episode, but I felt like the one mistake they made was that three quarters of the way through, you find out that the the real crew of the Enterprise is kind of like, they they know what's going on, and they're trying to contact her, whereas I would have liked her to have been completely in the dark until the last scene. And that's what I felt like with this episode. The fact that they keep cutting back to, um, what's his name? Um, Lamar. Lamar. And like them trying to find them, I thought ruined it. I would have liked to have just seen the, everything from the point of view of these five cast peop, uh, crew members of not knowing what the hell is going on. Wouldn't that have at least been one way to improve this plot? Right? Yes. Like they, they can't contact Lamar and they don't know where he is and that's it. You never see Lamar until the end. I uh, I don't know. Because uh, that episode of Star Trek, I actually really liked the way that they handled that. And I think that okay. I mentioned that last time we brought it up. Yeah, we're just repeating um, ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> because I think the, the fact that Crusher was, uh, she was still unaware until the very end. Sure. We knew what was going on about two thirds of the way in, but she didn't know. So that maintained her tension. Uh, I was actually going to reference that moment where um, we realized that she was on a different in a different universe, essentially, to compare and contrast to when the in this episode the plot twist that you said you enjoyed, where it turns out that you know, they they thought they were back on the Orville, but they weren't, and that was a good twist. I enjoyed that, but the way that they handled it, I was confused for a second. Because they just flip back to Lamar talking to Kiali after this battle and everything's normal, but we don't know why. And it just came out of left field. And I thought Mm -hmm. that I had fallen asleep for a second and missed something. Sure, sure. I agree. It felt very quick. The pace between the reveal Mm -hmm. that they were still in a hologram or Mm -hmm. whatever it is they were doing. I felt very confused. And I thought, oh, okay, so this is the first episode that I have to rewatch because I don't get what's going on. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> well, here's another thing. Now, I know that this was technically part of the illusion, so it maybe doesn't count. But the interaction where Isaac is, or I don't know if this was part of the illusion. I don't remember. When Isaac is warning them not to go down to the planet. And you remember uh, Charlie Burke is like, no, how can we trust him? Do you remember that part? Now, I yeah. don't remember. Was yeah. that part of the illusion or not? I don't remember it, if it was. No, I don't think it would. Oh, you know what? 
It, it was. Okay. Could have been, So yeah. Okay, even though it was part of the illusion, let's just assume that that's how she would re- react. Again, I'm starting to think, does this character have any other personality traits other than the fact that she doesn't trust Isaac? Because that's all she's done so far, right? Basically, yeah. So that's another problem. It's like, okay, yes, conflict is good for drama, but so far that's all she's done is just criticize Isaac and not trust him. They mm-hmm. need to give her something else to and, do. And speak out a turn while doing so. Yes, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, not only is she... Oh, God. <laughs> in charge. Essentially, Lamar is in charge, and so is she, because everybody has left the bridge. Mm-hmm. The captain, the first officer, security... Chief, like, they left the chief engineer mm-hmm. and an ensign, or who is arguably like, you know, she has Lamar's job, so mm-hmm. it's not like she's totally um, incapable, but like, why would you leave those two? Well, Isaac's there too, and he's kind of smart. Actually, do you know what? I would trust. <laughs> I would trust Isaac there too. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know what? That took me, it really took me out of the episode when Charlie was like, was saying what she was saying. Like, you, your race of people is c- perfectly content with wiping humans off the face of the galaxy. Mm-hmm. So why should we even trust you? Shut, all I could think was, shut up. Somebody get rid of this character, please. Right, right, right. Mm. And then when it snapped and they're back in a hologram. I was like, oh, okay, that was fake. But I, I was glad that it ended up there still in the hologram, though, because that was going to be a, a big issue that I had with the episode, that um, when it was the Kalon, when that was the, the, the reason for the, the whatever they were going through, for them to just leave this thing lying around for them to find, it, uh, oh, no, that too sloppy for them. So mm-hmm. I was glad that uh, that was actually part of the, part of the illusion. Yeah, that was super cool. However, that came right after uh, another nitpick of mine, which is um, right after they saved Kelly and they're still on Salea and this weird church door pops out of nowhere and uh, Ed's like, no, I'm done with this. We're not going to play with this. We're not going to play this game anymore. And then 30 seconds later, oh, we're sensing some sort of energy signature in a cave. Oh, let's go check it out. Oh, you're you're not going to take that bait, but you're going to take that bait. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and that was uh, again, which is fine. This was that was a very Captain Kirk esque speech, right? <laughs> Can yep. you hear me? We're not gonna, <laughs> you know, it, it's Kirk did it twenty times. It's fine, but again, you're right. They didn't even follow through with that. They didn't stick to their guns. Um, mm-hmm. I guess the only thing. So I know, Jolie, you said earlier that this one was funnier than the last two. Can you remember any of the gags in this episode? Because I don't think I do, honestly. There weren't just t- there weren't gags. It was mostly just dialogue between a character and Bordis. And it was like when they were talking about how they discovered, because Bordis never went to high school. So right. it was when they were telling him what the building was. And then. Okay. I can't remember. I really should have written these down. But like, it was just like dialogue funniness. um, Like the last two episodes, just more instances of it rather than one instance of it. Well, there was a moment where they asked to sit down with the popular girls and they wouldn't let them. And the Bordis did say something yes. funny. Oh, but yes. Well, well, okay, do you know what? This was funny. Malloy whispers in his ear and Bordis goes, well, you have a five head. <laughs> okay, what does that mean? I don't get that. Really, really a, big forehead. A, four, a five? She's a big forehead. Oh, okay. I get that. Okay. <laughs> and it's just bitchy and petty. Sure. And it is exactly the kind of... Okay, that was... That was cute. Yeah, that was good. That was good. And before that, That, Bordis said something else funny, didn't he? uh, It's probably about... It's probably about sitting in the cafeteria. Right. There was something, but I don't remember what it was. Maybe one of our listeners can um, write in. But it it was, again, a rare funny moment in this episode. One of the only Mm -hmm. ones. Yeah. (sighs) Oh, man. Now I remember that five head joke and I'm laughing again. Mm-hmm. See, that gave me and it gave me a little bit of hope that that this episode would have been much, much better. It wasn't ugh, it wasn't here's the thing, it's better than the other two. And I and I still didn't really like it. It was my least favorite of the season, to be honest. Ian? Hmm. What do you think? 
Yeah, I'm going to say least favorite too. There were far too many, I don't know, like little rip-offs and references to Star Trek episodes that did this sort of thing much better. Mm-hmm. I was uh, reminded of the original series episode Shore Leave, where the, mm. where the away team goes down to a planet and um, they're... Their fantasies come to life as well, and you know some of them get killed, but they get you know put back to brought back to life and rebuilt and that sort of thing. I don't know. Uh, a more interesting episode uh, was reminded of the TNG episode, the Royale. It's uh, the, yes. oh, the, a, a dubious episode where uh, the crew gets stuck on a casino on some planet where there's nothing else because some aliens found a book or something. Uh, not the greatest it was like an old ep- western. No, not the greatest episode, but they they handled the situation better, I think, than uh, mm-hmm. the Orville did. And oh, a DS Nine episode, "Move Along Home." That was another uh, episode I was reminded of, where they sort of had to, the crew had to solve problems to advance through a labyrinth of uh, of perilous booby traps. But each, <laughs> each one of these episodes that I was reminded of, they did it better than mm-hmm. this episode did. So it was a little bit mm. irritating to have all right. those negative comparisons. Ugh. That's well, crazy. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll... fine. With with all of that mounting evidence, okay, I guess I can agree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, all I can say is that like we discovered, I think it was last week, that they filmed the first half of the season before COVID hit. So we have two more episodes to go of pre-pandemic filming and then starting with episode six it'll go into the post-pandemic filming we'll call it so i guess nothing like a pandemic to improve your mood as a writer (laughs) (laughs) so we'll see if things get lighter yeah i don't know um but again i held out like i defended the show to all these um haters on on facebook but i'm officially worried and also i've heard hints um from i don't i don't want to spoil anything but i've heard hints about how this season's going to end and i'm a little bit worried i'm not going to say anything but um i don't know i just hope that things improve that's all i can say uh, it's a heavy sigh from yeah. me a heavy yeah. sigh uh i don't know like and if if, if yeah. we to be completely honest if we weren't doing this podcast I probably wouldn't be watching episode four. Oh, that's brutal. I'm hurt. I, I would still be watching. I felt that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I yeah, It's get... like it's becoming an obligation now. And I hate that because I, I loved this show so much. And I'm like you. I'm holding out a bit of hope. But well, I, um, I guess that's all we have to say. I don't know. Is there anything else to say about this episode? We... It's not specific to the episode but it is specific to the episodes that we've seen and i haven't brought it up yet but i noticed it i noticed it because they keep yelling profanities and it's not like i'm against swearing right it's that they never swore in the show before right so when when ed is like or oh, sorry when kiali is like come and get me assholes or uh ed is like i'm sick of this bullshit it really stands out yep i agree doesn't fit yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it, it, for right now it's really distracting. So, I just wanted to point that out. There. The other thing too. Okay, one thing I have to say is that this is a rare show that suited being on a network, right? It do, it doesn't have over season reaching arcs. It didn't have profanity. It didn't have nudity or violence. And mm-hmm. so, I, I don't think like I, I appreciate that you know streaming is catered to a sh- certain types of shows. But there's nothing wrong with a show that is all ages, that is easy to jump into on any episode. So I think that was one of its strengths. And you're right. It's like now that they have profanity, once that's another thing it loses by, you know, by alienating an all ages audience, I think. Mm -hmm. So. Ah, what can you do? I don't know. Um, well, good news, Ian, there's only seven left until you can stop watching the show. So Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky seven. Woo. Um, but again, I'm still holding out hope. I mean, I still have some faith in Seth MacFarlane, so hopefully things will improve. We'll see. This one, like I said, is probably my least favorite episode of the entire series for everything I said. Um, if this was, again, if this was, if this was the first season and we were three episodes in, 
I'm with you, Ian. I would be like, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to give up. But because we have so many good episodes before this, I'm going to, I still have faith and hopefully order can be restored. Mm. I guess that's my final word. And also we, we should, we should consider a, a potential format change to this podcast where we have the joke section, but we just review jokes from like an episode of season one or season two randomly. <laughs> we just throw that in there. Agreed. The good old days. There you go. All right. The okay, Norville well, retrospective. Looking forward. There you go. Starting next week, we'll have a retrospective on jokes from the first two seasons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> woo! Uh, so yeah, I want to thank GI Julie and Champion for joining me. Thank you. Uh, it was yeah. a struggle, yeah. but we made it. Yep. Be here next week when we review episode 2030. 2030. Episode 30. Because this is 29, right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yes. 2010. So one episode per episode next week of Morville, Morville, Orville with champion G.I. <laughs> Jolie and Mike L. Until next week, there's more where that came from. Mm-hmm.